And so as we work through it, we see the patience of the saints. Um, and we have that here in chapter 14, verse 12. Uh, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And I just wonder how serious, serious are you about keeping the Lord's commandments? Uh, now, we're not talking about um, Ten Commandments and, and, and all these dietary commandments, you know. We might be talking about Ten Commandments to, to a certain degree or something. You know, thou shalt not kill. What, what, what was good in the Old Testament is good in the New Testament. Thou shalt not commit adultery, bear false witnesses, a witness, and all those type of covet your neighbor's uh, possessions and, and those things. Okay, fine. Um, but commandments, uh, we have an obligation um, to communicate to our Savior who is Lord. He desires that level of intimacy with us. And so he says, keep the commandments of God and, and faith in Jesus. That's important because a Muslim could tell you that they're keeping the commandments of God. Uh, a Buddhist can tell you they're com com keeping the commandments of Buddha, which they, they revere as God. Um, you know, a so-called black Hebrew Israelite with their purple garments on, y'all smile, and, and they be out there dressed funny, talking about they, they keeping the commandments of God, wear old nappy beard and, and all that type of stuff, and, 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 and criticize you because you ain't wearing a beard, right? Um, and, but, but here it is, but they say, well, we keep God's commandments. But the question is, if you read what it's, it reads in, in, in verse 12, it says, and keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And if your faith is not in Christ, um, what you have, it ain't even real, you know. Verse 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yeah, said the Spirit, they that may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. So those who died in the Lord, they're blessed. And it's amazing, right? It's amazing, you know. Who person who dies in the Lord. Now, you have a whole lot of people who die in the world, and sometimes over some foolishness, sometimes over some bull bay, some, sometimes over some drug deal that went back. And I talked to you, um, you got a whole bunch of people who didn't die over unpaid gambling debt. Y'all smile. <laughs> um, a whole bunch of people didn't die of overdose uh, of drugs, or just, just doing stuff, being out there reckless, or wrong place one time, wrong time. And, and you got a whole bunch of people that, that died. But here it is that some priority um, and favor is given to those who have died in the Lord. And he says that they may rest on their labors and their works do follow them. And I looked up and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set unto the Son of Man, this is Christ, the Lamb, on his head a golden crown, and his hand a sharp sickle. So now when you talk about the Son of Man, and Daniel talks about the Son of Man, Ezekiel is called the Son of Man, but he's not the Son of Man. Christ is the Son of Man. And when you think about the Son of Man, the Son of Man title is just as powerful as the Son of God. The Son of God, we understand, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. So we understand the Son of God, the fact that our Christ stepped down through 42 generations. We understand the Son of God, that he is the second person of our triune God. We understand the Son of God, but when you see Son of Man, this is the, is the Messiah. That's how you say it in Hebrew. This is the Messiah. And so what you see is the Son of Man. And then you record that this Son of Man, and we talked about this last week, the Son of Man is going to come and set up his kingdom, and his kingdom is going to be everlasting. This is the Son of Man. So